Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and today we're going to be picking up where we left off. And in the previous video, you'll remember that we had it set up so that it will pursue the player, and it will attack the player. But at this point in time, this is all cosmetic, so let's give it a few things so that it will actually deal damage when you hit. Alright, so let's get to it. The first thing you need to do is, on the target, we need to tell it that it has health to begin with. So let's create a new state machine. Let's give it a new float value. Let's, let's call it 50 for now. now. Don't forget naming conventions. Very, very key. It'll save you headaches in the future. Alright, so now that we've got that, let's show it in the inspector. Okay. Alright, the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and create two states on the collider. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to make it so that when it's not in an attack pose, it's not going to do any damage. So, for example, say you knock this into another player, or it gets knocked into you, and it's not actually attacking. It shouldn't be doing damage. This is just to give us a little bit extra control. So for this, we're going to need to create a new finite state machine on the collider itself. And let's give it new two states. First is going to be neutral. And the second one is going to be attacking. Alright, so we're going to get two events, and they're going to be global events. And attacking. And making sure that they're global, because we're going to make them called from the basic enemy. So we need to make sure that the basic enemy can see them. And these are going to be global transitions. So neutral and attacking. All right. So in order to control the entry and exit, what we're going to be using is the send event. Now in the readying, let's add in a send event action. Let's put that to the top. So that's the first thing that we do. It's going to be a game object, and it's going to be Collider. The event is going to be attacking. But the thing is, since it takes a few, like half of a second to rise, let's give it a little bit of a delay. So about mm, 0.7 seconds. All right, so now that we've got that, let's copy it. And let's add a new event here, but we'll change it to neutral without a delay. All right, so let's test that out by watching them click over. Okay. And actually, there is one thing that I realize I'm going to have to adjust. We might need to give this bit of a delay, but for now, let's see how well we can do it. So in the collider, there are a few things that we need to do. In the attacking, we're going to tell it to look for a particular trigger. Because we're going to be extracting information whenever it hits a tagged object called player. Because if you remember, this has a player tag, and we're going to store that in the target. Okay. Now, this is good. Next thing we need to do is an event to fire once it has satisfied a collision with a player player tagged object. And we'll go into here, which is where we will deal damage. Alright, so in the deal damage, there are three actions that we're going to be using. We're going to tell it to get the health, the current health of the target right now, we're going to subtract a certain amount from the health, and then we're going to tell it to update the health in here. 
And for that we need get and set sm for floats. So get set and float subtract. Okay, now this is where it gets fun. And by fun, I mean fun. See, if we're going to be setting it up eventually to handle the target, but since the target right now is an empty game object, it doesn't necessarily know what to do. Because when we expose the list of FSM names, there are none. Now there are two things that you can do. The first thing you can do is you can manually drag in the object choose the finite state machines and set it up the way that you want and we're gonna have to store the value so hit points and it's a float there we go now that's one way you can go about doing it the other way that you can go about doing it is if you can expose here and drag the target in here. And I'll show you on this one. So specify game object, the target, health, health. Now both will work, will work equally well. But the thing is, if you have it set up this way, where you've manually dragged it in, you're going to want to change it over to the variable. Now this is two ways that you two ways that you can set up these two actions. And both of them will work, but they do require that you remain with good naming conventions, especially the uh this way where you specify a game object first and then you tell it the target because you're hard coding these values in. And if these names change, especially the FSM name, if this changes, you're going to have to go back in here and change it up so that it reflects the updated information. All right, so the amount of damage that we're going to do is 10 points of damage. And that's set up, so let's go ahead and add a dump state. So. Okay, bear with me for one moment. Okay, so I'm back, and it looks like I came across a little bit of an issue with regards to this. It seemed that the delay was a little bit too long, and therefore it wasn't getting it, giving it enough time to do all the calculations necessary. And I also had it set that it would sell set to the neutral in the recover, and it was way too quick. So I decided to put it into the idle spot, and this will actually help us because it'll then force the collider to be in a neutral state from the beginning of the game. Alright, so there's one other thing. I didn't necessarily need to have that dump event in there because once, since these are not every frames, they didn't need, they weren't going to be firing off every frame. They would fire once and then be done. So the extra state that I had here was completely unnecessary. All right, so let's get rid of the fin next frame event. Let's do a bit of cleanup. And I'll show you what's going on. All right, so watch the health. Three, 20, 10, zero. Okay, now as this is going, it's basically going to keep on dealing out 10 points of damage each hit. But we're going to be setting that up so that it will have a bottom effect. And basically, at this point, once you reach zero hit points, that's when you could, for example, set up a state where the target disappears or destroys itself or any other type of game over or loss of life events. But we're going to be covering that in a future video because at this point we've gone ahead and we've done what we needed to. So if you like this video, feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I hope you have a great one.